Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dork down for a while. Hi, it's Jackie Cation, and you are listening to the Dork Forest. The website's JackieCation.com, DorkForest.com. TheDorkForest.com if you like a determiner. Let's do the credits. Patrick Brady's going to fix this audio and video. Vilmos works on JackieCation.com. And Mike Rickberg uh, sang the song with his wife, Sarah. He composed it, and he will sing his version of the Mexican hat dance at the end of this show. Thank you so much for listening to The Dorks Forest. Here's a scoop. I'm doing stand-up online. A lot of Zoom shows will eventually go back on the road. Sign up for my email list. It's easy to get off. It's harder to get on than it is to get off. And no harm, no foul, if ever bored. JackieCasia.com. Sign up for the email list. You'll find out about my weekly Zoom shows and stand-up on the road eventually. You may donate to the show if you would like. I would like. Sure, I would. There's PayPal, Jackie at JackieCation.com, and there is a PayPal button on both DorkForest.com and JackieCation.com, and there's Venmo, if you like Venmo, Jackie-Cation, oddly enough. If you have listened to all of the shows, go to DorkForest.BandCamp.com, I think. The Dork Forest has a Bandcamp page. You can listen to a, but a lot of ones that are free from pre 2000 nine when I started pre-recording and uh then there's a live episodes that cost me a couple of bucks so I charge you a couple of bucks there's also some stand-up there's a story uh album that's very exciting there and um other than that I have a lot of merch in my garage feel free to order if you need, know anybody who doesn't have any cds or the dvd and uh you can follow me everywhere at Jackie Cation let's get into the show hey it's Jackie Cation I'm in my garage and I'm fine. It's finally happening, Mark. We're doing it. <laughs> salt fight, Mark Salt fight, palindromist or pal- palindromist. What is it? Palindromist. Palindromist. I say, and the Oxford English Dictionary agrees with me. Doesn't matter what Will Short says. He's <laughs> just is, wrong. Sorry. This is a fight between two people. That is the. Thinks, that is. Yeah. This is the yeah. best dork forest ever. Could it be more <laughs> specific? And well, so, Schwartz thinks it's uh, it's it's too uh, pretentious to say palindromist. Uh, I think it's sexy. So, <laughs> wow, uh, you're both wrong, and uh, <laughs> I love um, I love all of it. Uh, what is a palindrome? Well, first uh, of all, let's uh, tell people yeah. it's at Dowish a at t a o i s h and that's uh, right. You have or the all- palindromist.org is the, the, website the website for the website. Oh, palindromist.org, yeah. And um, yeah. all of that will be in the notes to listen yes. to Mark, and that will be lovely. What, 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 what is it? What, what, words and palindrom- sentences that are the same backwards and forwards, like boob or, or Bob. dad. Or uh, I like longer ones like a taco cat or uh, sit on a potato pan Otis or... Uh, Eva, can I stack Rod's sad ass dork cats in a cave? That is super specific. And I like that last one the best. Taco cat. You rarely ever say the word taco cat. No, it's true. Well, it's it really popular. In- it drives me crazy, actually, because to write a palindrome is so hard. And I, I, you know, I find it really amusing the ingenuity people do to just try to make them work. Sure. And then taco cat's just sitting there like a gold nugget you found on the sidewalk. <laughs> but people love Taco Cat. There's t-shirts, you can buy books, Taco Cat. Drives oh, me really? crazy. Okay, yeah. all right. There's a band well, named Taco Cat. Okay, so essentially there's different tiers of love in a palindrome. Oh and, yeah. And so people, yeah, I mean, I think people love language to begin with. And then yeah. all of a sudden you're like, well, this is a weird thing, like haiku. Yeah. And palindromes, and I mean, these are these are just unique, unique ideas. How did you, how did you first uh, learn your love of the language? This that well, uh, yeah, like a lot of people, um, I got into it like in third grade or fourth grade uh, for international listeners age eight, nine. Uh, it's very often taught propagandistically by the educational institutions uh, to try to get kids interested in language. Okay. So. Uh, I have a friend from San Francisco, John Agee, who does very well with these books of 
palindrome cartoons for kids. Like his famous one is go hang a salami. I'm a lasagna hawk. Oh my God. That is hilarious. Uh, because yeah. that is clearly a palindrome as well. And as- he's a brilliant cartoonist too. So he's got hilarious cartoons with each of these. Oh, that's super cute. And he lives up yeah. in San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I started my zine back in the day. So I was actually able to just meet him at Specs bar, which is an, I guess you're not drinking these days, but it's an awesome dive bar in uh, North Beach. Who doesn't love the the dank? Uh, they yeah, probably exactly. have comedy, and uh, so <laughs> Thank, thankfully not. But it's right by the Purple Onion. Okay, like a block or two from the Purple Onion. Okay, this is. Uh, by the way, this is being recorded in 1994. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was. That's about when it started. Even a little before that. It's uh, so what? Um, so okay. So when you were a kid, you were into it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and it just so built- I've got a story yeah. about that. So when we were kids, my dad, we lived in Portland, Oregon, and my dad loved to do these insane long car vacations where we would drive like four or five hundred miles a day. Oh, my and we God. had one of those VW camper vans where with a fold out table <laughs> and seats that faced each other. So we just fought basically most, you know, three right. boys in four years. Uh, but at a certain point, my parents got clever and said, uh, we'll pay you a nickel a page if you make newspapers, which really enthralled us for a while, even though the headlines were like, John is an idiot, you know, would be the headline (laughs) of the newspaper or whatever with the picture. We still got our nickel. (laughs) Right, right. Um, You're just like, a lot of this is going to be headlined. A lot of this is going to be a square for where the photos are going to go. I'm the editor. So, no, I'm I'm drawing an ugly picture, you know, horns and mustache and black teeth and all that. Sure, sure. Um, but then we got into palindrome. So this is about, you know, that age. Uh, and we started trying to write palindromes and we were terrible at it. It's really hard, you know? And so like the best we ever came up with was radar, kayak, radar. Okay. Cause all three of those words are, are palindromes. But yeah. And so if you do the same one on the outside and put one in the middle, you can do that with any three words that are palindromes. Yep. A kayak could have radar maybe. Anyway, that's the best we came up with. That's not bad for children until. Oh, just you wait. We thought we were going to go down in history as the most famous kids ever. Because we, I don't remember whether it was me or my brothers, uh, came up with a dirty palindrome. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if we can say this on a podcast, but it's. Oh, my God. What is it? Eat poop tea. Oh. And we were dancing and celebrating. tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eat uh-huh. poop tea. Yeah. Uh, but then then we noticed the <laughs> fatal flaw. It doesn't actually work. It would have to be eat poop tay, T-A-E, to go backwards. Mm. Or eight poop, A-E-T, poop tea. Oh, you were so close. You were so uh, close to making the, the kid chronicles. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. now no one's ever heard of me. So that's what <laughs> happened. Um, Mark Saltwhite, so- everybody. Mark Saltwhite. <laughs> So then, you know, like kids do, we got bored and completely forgot about it for about 20 years. Uh, And then, you know, uh, as I was getting ready to get married and whatever, I uh, uh, was insomniac one night, which doesn't usually happen. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking, well, palindromes is fun. Let's give that a shot. And suddenly I was good at it. Like I I could reel them off with the help of a large dictionary. Um, And I wrote this really long one I called the brag of the vain lawyer. Okay. Would you like to hear it? Yes, please. Of course I would. It was the, it was the centerfold of issue one of my zine. <laughs> it, uh... There's only one answer. Yes, I would love to hear it. Yeah, and yes. the brag Thank of you. the vain lawyer. What happened was you said the words, the brag of the vain lawyer. And all I could think was, is that a palindrome? <laughs> yeah, right. That's yeah. the danger of this whole business. Right, right. Um, but you would be a pretty bad podcaster if you're like, nah, no, nah, we're really short on time here. here let's, uh, let's <laughs> right, we're eight time. minutes in. It's right, uh, it's that's over. The, that's Thank the improv. You. No, no, you're not a doctor. <laughs> oh, uh, before okay. you tell me about uh, this, yeah. where are you? I saw somebody right now, walk behind you. I'm in Middlebury, Vermont, in the Davis Family Library, where I work. Oh, fair enough. Uh, a person walked behind you uh, <laughs> yeah. through the window. It was very what exciting. What am I one of my assistants okay i haven't seen uh, yeah, there's a, lot a of very large humans. staff yes <laughs> huge staff here for the point <laughs> all right so tell me about the lawyer yeah uh so the brag of the vain lawyer 
which is the first real palindrome I ever wrote, goes, resold in Saratoga, riveting in a wide whale suit, I use law, Ed. I, Wan, ignite Virago, comma, tar a snide loser. Wow. That is, that's long, first of all. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know half those words. I looked them up in the dictionary. But, you know, I learned, right. like, what a Virago <laughs> is and stuff. It makes sure, sense. Is it pro- pro- it's so funny because I have always pronounced it uh, vir- uh, Virago, I think. So um, I I've like Virago. I've never heard anyone other than me say the word in my life. Um, well, I've only read it. So when yeah, I say me it's, too. it's like the word, we're, we're, it's like the name Sean. Uh, yeah. For years it was seen. 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 Yeah. Right. Mm. Right. Yeah. My mom um, made fun the, of me. My mom had an infamous one of those where uh, the word M-I-S-L-E-D. M-I-S-L-E-D. So you can tell we're what? more readers than socialized people. Right. right? We, we mispronounce <laughs> a lot of words. Uh, she pronounced that word misled. Ooh, wait a minute. She has been misled as how that yes, is supposed yes. to be pronounced. But it sounds really bad if you say he misled me. Yeah. Like you should sudden, call the police. If yeah. someone misles you, you should probably call the police. There's I think. a lot of injustice there. Yeah, you got to talk to somebody. Uh, I wow. once said on a, on a video, a comedy video we made in college, I once, uh, on, you know, not trying to be funny, just thinking that was how it goes, uh, said the word G-A-M-U-T. Mm-hmm. As yeah, the like, whole gamut. The whole gamut. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind the, the accent on that syllable. It's, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, you, wanna, you want the whole gamut. I had more books than friends in high school is what we're saying here. Right. I think, uh, I think that <laughs> is the pattern we're both seeing. Uh, yeah. Cool. I'm writing that down. Like if I titled these shows, it would be called more books than friends. Ah, um, good, good. And uh, so, yeah, so that's how, that's how it's, you, so you had the zine. Yeah. The uh, palindromist. Yeah, palindromist, please. Palindromist, please. Who um, are you, Will Shorts? Come on. I'm, I'm Will Shorts, who I don't know who that is. But <laughs> He's the uh, New York Times crossword puzzle editor. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, okay. Which he has been for a long, he's uh, the wordplay. Also, if you ever listen to NPR on Sunday mornings, he's the puzzle master, Will Shorts, who oh, does those. I've heard that. Yeah. 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 His yeah. name is so also he's... Shorts. I always think, yeah. well, I mean, that, that couldn't have been pleasant for him as a child. Is no, Will wearing no. shorts? Is what, but he, but he, wearing has pants? Hap- <laughs> he is the happiest guy I've ever met, I have to say. I've met him in person a couple times. And, uh, you know, he does crosswords for a living. Right. I mean, if that's if that that feels like one of those gigs that you fall into and then all of a sudden you're like, mm. it's I love it. I love it so much. And now I'm allowed to do it for a living. Right. There's absolutely Except no reason to be happy in your work. Oh, yeah. He, he might be he might be a, a good counter example to that. He really worked his ass off to become that person, by which I mean, yeah. he went to I think it was University of Iowa and they have a roll your own major, a, a roll your own Ph.D., he is the only person in the history of the world with a PhD in enigmatology, the study of puzzles. Oh, wow. I bet you no longer. Uh, I don't know. It, you know, because uh, I will tell you something. My husband, Andy Ashcraft, uh, yeah. teaches uh, game design at mm. a school, and there is a master's program in very specific kinds of game design. Wow. And I bet you enigmatography. Yeah might now be a thing that people study but he might have created yeah. it he might have it might, might be have a prerequisite i think well you gotta want it god knows you gotta yeah. want it yeah anyway he certainly worked his butt off then he was uh editor of games magazine for years uh what years starting up like 1980 i don't know i'm gonna say 85 to 95 something like that how old is he whenever it existed well, Shorts, he's probably 60, 65, I'm going to guess. I don't know why. I thought this guy would be like 90 years old. And, uh, and, I and could it, be wrong. He, he's very fit and has good skin if he is. If he's 90, it's all working yeah. out for him. Okay. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, he's uh, – but if you listen to that puzzle segment? No. Oh, it's so I'm sure he I've heard on, it, but I don't listen yeah, to it. But yeah, he, he, it's an important difference. And, and I appreciate you acknowledging that. I mean, the world <laughs> would be a lot better if people made that distinction more often. <laughs> um, 
he he comes on. So someone sends in a postcard and they pick one at random and they have you on to do live on the air word puzzles, which are generally very hard. Okay. And it's like the most terrifying thing in the world to me. Like I've even given him puzzles that he's used on the air and I'm still scared to death of doing these puzzles. So you wouldn't want to do it yourself is what I'm hearing. No, absolutely. I have never sent in the postcard. But so uh, in uh, in 2012, he set up the World Palindrome Championship. Okay. uh, And uh, I sort of accidentally won the damn thing. And so when was that? Where was that? In in Brooklyn. Okay. It was like at the Marriott or something in Brooklyn. Uh, Hundreds of people? Hundreds? Dozens? What are uh, we looking at? Well, competitors. Yeah, there were uh, eight competitors, attendees? eight or nine competitors, 600, 600 people in the crowd. Respectable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, so he invited me out to give a talk at this really cool event he does at the Mohonk Mountain Resort, which is an amazing, do you know that place in upstate New York? No, but I have, we have to back up slightly to hear about yeah, this 2012 yeah. thing, because I need oh, yeah. to know what is a palant, what's, what's the contest? Oh, okay. So you will be more familiar with this than almost anyone else. Do you know NATO Green's show Iron Comic, which has been uh, a bridge town and such? I, I believe I did it once. I don't. Yeah. It's sort of a. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't listening though. Right. I don't. I it, right. Exactly. I was there, but I don't think I listened. No. <laughs> it's a. It's based on Iron Chef. Right, which I remember. Right? Yes. It's sort so, of a, a very fancy version of Chopped for those of you who never I, I saw don't know Iron Chopped. Effect. So yeah, right. So so uh, Iron, Iron Chef, uh, these cooks, they show up. You had three random ingredients. Here's beets, chocolate sauce, and uh, an egg, and uh, make three gourmet meals of it right. <laughs> or something. And so uh, Iron Comic is just you show up. Let's take three prompts from the crowd. Improv. You have twenty minutes to write a completely new set. That's nothing right. you've ever done before. That's right. I remember right? that. And so uh, uh, Will created with my at my behest um, this competition based on Iron Comic. So uh, uh, he would come up with three constraints to include in your palindromes. Like one of them was it has to have an X and a Z in it, and then you had like an hour to create new original palindromes and they actually Google them to make sure they're not old palindromes. Okay. And how long do they have lengths that they have to be? It's or? up to you. It's up okay. to you. Uh, but you're not, not going to win if it's one word. Words. No, not one word, but, uh, well, I can tell you the one that did win. Yeah. Went blue. I actually had two. One I think was a better palindrome, but I had an advisor there and I said, should I use this one, which is funnier and kind of blue or this one, which I think is a better palindrome. And he's like, don't be an idiot. Use the sex yak. Mm-hmm. So um, the winner is devil K fixes trapeze part sex. If yak lived. Okay. All right. Crowd goes crazy. <laughs> right. The crowd, you, know. you know what? I bet you they <laughs> fucking did. And uh, I am so yeah. sorry that I have to spend after every <laughs> sentence you say, Mark, I have to go. <laughs> that a, okay that's a palindrome okay so i should have a little prompt like i'll snap my fingers if it's a palindrome or something right, right. or you if you had share screen opportunity here on youtube yeah uh, yeah it'll be something so the, yeah the um the movie the plundermist which just came out feature documentary starring weird al yankovich danica mckeller will shorts and me um oh, nice what they do they have a really nice device whenever someone does a palindrome they ring a little bell at the okay. end of the palindrome so that you know that it's a palindrome and that it works what what streaming service is this program on it's on apple tv and okay. also on itunes so when you sign up to get ted lasso which you absolutely should do you then get the palindromists also for free there you go it's uh I, I, I believe I got, I was eligible for a free year when I bought my phone and, um, oh yeah, and I didn't take it up. I didn't take them up on it. It might be waiting for you. It might still be waiting for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what was the one that you didn't do that you think was a better so one? So that one was, I tan, I mole in a way, Obama, I am a boy, a wan Illuminati. Ooh, wan Illuminati. Yeah. That's a great, that's a great term. 
Thank you. I had one guy like a year later say, well, you know, if it's just you, that's singular and it should be Illuminatus. I was like, fuck you. Write your own palindrome. Oh, yeah. There's That guy's going to be there. <laughs> yeah. That guy's I, so going to be there right at the palindrome uh, hang. Going, yeah, he's, he's, uh, not, he's not improving on it. <laughs> oh, my God. That guy. Um, the Never thing about be that, that guy. guy. Well, the thing about that guy is that I actually kind of, I am that guy sometimes. Mm, and mm -hmm. I married that guy and a lot of my friends right. are that guy. And the door oh, yeah. forest is teeming, teeming, I tell you. Yeah. With that yeah. guy. Uh, well, and, but it, and it can be used, that power can be used for good. You just have sure. to be aware. No, absolutely. That when you're called upon it, when someone goes, hey, man, <laughs> uh, you write your own palindrome. Yes. Yeah. You have to go. Fair enough. Stepping away. Uh, it was just it, and because it becomes right. kind of a muscle memory. You're like, no, yeah. I don't see the Oxford comma or right. I don't see <laughs> right, right. Right. it's it becomes this this thing that you that is automatic and you have driven someone mad accidentally. So you right. have to be able to just go. You are right. Did not be mean to be a pedant. And I or gotta, you can go here is my palindrome and it's better than yours, motherfucker. Yeah, the idea of doubling down, uh, you might want to do, do the work. You have to do the work if you're going to double down. Don't just, you can't bluff them. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, let's see yeah. your award from winning in 20. Yeah, 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 right. Well, there's another one in five years, buddy. Come back, join in, see so how you do. It was such a hit. You had another one in five years. What happened? Well, uh, Will Shorts has sort of been setting this thing up where he's going to do a new World Palindrome Championship every five years. So there was oh, okay. another one in 2017, which is the subject of the feature film, The Palindromist, now available on Apple TV. Okay. Fascinating movie, really enjoyable, a lot of fun. Um, I really think that actually, but um, yeah, it's and also really I did yeah. I did little historical segments. So the the filmmaker chopped it up with uh, little animated bits from palindrome history, which has kind of been my obsession over the last twenty years, uh, and I wrote those and narrated them. Is there are there palindromes in every language? I I mean, there's what thousands of languages, so I can't yeah. be exhaustive. But uh, I whenever I've looked hard into a given language there's always been some okay yeah i mean i was gonna say have you run across people who are like i am french and we also oh. have palindromes oh yeah or, absolutely well yeah. certainly all the european languages but even like um there's an amazing chinese one from like 300 uh ce and we don't say yeah, yeah. ad anymore ce um Common this woman Su Hui, was a very was a um there's a good story behind it too. So she was married to a, 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 you know, an official of the emperor, whatever, in China, nobility. And he got posted to a remote uh, province and he took up with a concubine. Bastard. What? And to win there her husband. people cheating on other people back oh, yeah. 300 years Oh, yeah. <laughs> who knew? Who knew? I thought it I was just even... monogamy galore back then. We haven't even gotten to so the obscene who invented palindromes, but let me finish this story okay, first. Finish that one first. He also invented pornography. Um, he's a character. But so Su Hui, to win her husband back from the slattern, uh, wrote uh, what's called the Star Gauge. She did not. She not only wrote it, but she s sewed it as brocade on silk, and That's it's why this it amazing. Lasted. It's Half this amazing street. figure. <laughs> 841 Chinese characters in sort of a grid, kind of like a Confederate flag shape, but without the racism and slavery. Uh, right. And you can read the characters backwards, forwards, doing loops, little crosses and, and, and stuff. And does it all say, screw you, husband? <laughs> no, it goes after the woman appropriately. Uh, not she's trying to win him back. Well, she's trying to win him back. If she didn't want him, she could have just let him go. He was in another province. You know, it's not like there were airplanes then. So women have been dumb forever. That's the other thing. <laughs> women have been like, no, that well, guy cheated on me. We're going to try to get him back for sure. He'll never do it again. For he sure. He was rich. He might have been cute. We don't know. We don't know the calculations. 
Right. I'm sure she blamed herself. That's what we do know. <laughs> we know that uh, there's a good portion of the ladies oh, who are blaming yeah. themselves on their oh, yeah. bag, fellas. Uh, don't do yeah. it. But she made yeah. an amazing sort of giant tapestry where you could read it in all the directions. Yeah, so the characters, the they form rhyming poetry in every different direction. It's not always the same, but each little section or direction forms a different poem. There's thousands of poems in this thing. Wow. It's amazing. How do you yeah. spell her name in English? Do you remember? S-U space H-U-I. Okay. I am going to look her up because she sounds yeah. awesome. She now, is pretty awesome, despite who, her taste in men. But, you know, uh, we all know, if, we if all I was know gonna, that woman. If I was going to hang not <laughs> hang out with women because of their taste in men, yeah, there'd be trouble. I'd spend a lot of time alone. I, I'm not going to name any podcasts, but... Um, uh, I'm not going to name any... I'm not going to name any uh, men. Uh, yeah, I, well... I've, because a lot of a lot yeah. of my friends actually they kept you know they would come with me to shows and they weren't comics and they would meet these guys who were comics and i was like oh, oh and they would pick no no, here's no, the thing, no no they would pick the nicest of the comics or they would pick the most messed up they never went oh. hardcore for the mean stupid comics but the right. super like they would they would pick like a nice comic who wasn't a very good comic or they would uh -huh. pick up a very funny comic who was a giant disaster of a human oh. adult oh. human right. so uh i have Yikes. i have there's some bad taste out there it happens with the yeah. men folk as well it happens oh yeah oh yeah both ways right who invented right. the palindrome so that would be Sotades the Obscene of Maronea, a guy who lived in Alexandria, Egypt, in the shadow of the Great Library, approximately oh. 280 BC. Okay. Um, yeah. And BCE, he was, if we're going to be. BCE, thank you. Thank am you I, very much. Am yeah. I that guy? I'm that guy. Yeah. I'm no, guy. no, this very appropriately in this case. You know, I think there's a philosophical point on being that guy there. I think the whole universe of dorkdom is riding that fine edge between being that guy and being no fun. And you have to, where do you make your exceptions is, is I think the whole taste part of it. You know where it helps? Not taking mm. yourself too seriously, which I think yes. a lot of Rangers of the Dork Forest have access to. I mean, mm -hmm. most of my fans are just like, no, I know that I'm that guy. <laughs> I know <laughs> yeah. that I'm that person. Right. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna call it and then I'm gonna back away slowly knowing yeah, that yeah. i probably irritated you perfect and then when you yeah. mock me we can both laugh at it and then maybe we'll be friends we don't that's know that's how we grow actually mm -hmm. very beautiful it's the people uh, the people or politicians who can't admit they're ever wrong that i have trouble with but again uh, we don't want to name names but... oh my god so many names yeah anyway they're every rock yeah. in this country turned over anyway yeah. so yeah so so toddy see obscene uh and how are you he spelling also... that S-O-T-O-B-S, no, <laughs> that's being that smart ass guy. That's my dorkdom is, is being the smart ass humor guy. Um, the uh, I do try to keep it out of my professional comedy act though. But um, the uh, uh, S-O-T-A-D-E-S. Okay, so Tades. Yeah, so Tades or so Tades, I, you know, I don't know. I'm not pronunciation right. is my weakest spot on all this stuff i've been doing all this research on so right 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 um, and actually i have a friend who's a professor of classics at cornell who tells me even the professors of classics disagree on the pronunciation of a lot of this stuff so yeah you can't made get, me feel a lot better yeah you can't get it no one was there right no so, there's no sound recordings <laughs> from that era it's uh but my, uh, my latin teacher in high school took uh, conversational latin and oh, she really? said it was one of the dumbest things she said i thoroughly enjoyed it but it was genuinely dumb <laughs> and um and then she taught me uh she taught us all latin is dead dead as can be first to kill the romans now it's killing me and then <laughs> i went to college and ended up i tried to get retro credits and took fifth semester latin and then i went mm -hmm. back to high school and told her that and she almost burst into tears and actually said this sentence you're not good at latin jackie oh anyway no oh <laughs> oh no that's horrible uh she was correct uh latin is well, takes a great deal of work but he, tell me about yeah. sotade so he lived okay. back in 290 or something yeah 280 so he died probably 280 270 you know it's it's so there's such a the fog of history is so you know and i think it really drives me crazy when people like say they know exactly what happened in 
500 BCE. No, you didn't. Nobody knows. It's just a fact that nobody knows, right? Right. Anyway, um, so he was also a sexual outlaw. That's the other interesting thing about it. What, well, did, he, professor, what, what did he do for a living? He was a poet, uh, probably, you know, uh, 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 patronized by the king and queen. And uh, he was uh, to Philadelphia. Was Algeria? Where was Alexandria? No, Egypt. It was Egypt. in Egypt. Okay, so yeah. this is so a So it's right man. on the Mediterranean. Yeah, this is we a We don't know. Man. It's interesting. There's a lot of North African palindromists. Uh, Luxorius, who was a sort of a bad stand-up comic right after Rome fell. Uh, Optation Porphyrius, who is not precisely a palindromist the way we know it, but he did kind of backwards and around figures. Uh, pattern poetry, as we say. Uh, there was actually a lot. There was kind of a whole rash of that. But um, yeah. So anyway, it was right so around Egypt, then. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, so how do we know that he invented it? Well, it's mostly from an epigram of Marshall's is what gives us this. Um, that's a very interesting question because he was so scandalous that almost everything he's written has been destroyed. All we have is like a dozen fragments of his work and several references to him. Like, uh, I'll cut to the end of the story. He was executed by King Ptolemy for insulting him at his wedding to his sister, which uh, Sotadis felt was a bit objectionable. And uh, Wait, so so he's, at, <laughs> he's been invited to the wedding. Yes. He's, and he's at- Is that the banquet afterwards? He's talking to Ptolemy's sister? Uh, Ptolemy and his sister wife, uh, okay. Arsinoe too. Okay, are, yeah. are the three of them are hanging out by the bacon? Well, Mac it's a Canadian. large crowd. It's after, you know, it's after the, it's a banquet. People are doing toasts. It's that kind of thing, right? Oh, okay. After, yeah, it's the wedding banquet, the night of the wedding. And, and so uh, he did a toast and he did more of a roast. Yeah, it was a poem he wrote, um, uh, only two lines of which have survived, the first and the last. And the first poem is very flattering. He kind of sets it up, right? It's like... Uh, uh, oh, just like Zeus had a thing with his sister Hera. So you go, okay, this is very approving. This is like, okay, yeah, it's your sister. That, I don't know. It's but cool. you're God. Right? Yeah. Wait till the zinger at the end. And so he does, the middle part is all lost to history. But the final line, which I'm not even going to try to do it in Greek, but it basically translates as you are shoving your prick into an unholy hole. Wow. It was a little more subtle than that, but not a lot <laughs> and clearly not enough. I think the subtler joke was your kids are going to have hip dysplasia, <laughs> which is something dogs get when you breed them too close together. Dogs hadn't been invented yet then. It was all cats. All cats. Yeah, it's just cats, right? Just right. Meow faces as far as the eye yeah. can see. Egypt, so right? Yeah, there's that no Egyptian wasn't, dogs. But were they palindromes, his poem? Well, not. So not here's the thing. We, okay. we only have 12 individual lines of his work because everything was destroyed because he was considered, you know, uh, heretical, queer, um, uh, uh, obscene. One of his ones that survived is a, a really funny fart joke, which turns out to be a scathing review of a flute player. So he said it's basically like a mighty ox ripping farts in the field as he plows through the soil. That's wow. his description of a guy playing the flute. That's I would have so loved Tony's to read the whole making yeah. friends. Make it friends yeah, exactly. every time he put pen to sheepskin or whatever exactly. parchment. And, and, and the, so the sexual scandal part of it was they had these people called the Canadoi who were uh, effeminate dancers. They sang songs. They had their own argot, their own lingo. So it's kind of okay. like a mix between uh, underground street rap and drag queens or something. Okay, it's, so they it's were hard to quite picture this. Yeah. Oh, I can totally picture that. It would be, like, <laughs> be more like Cockney slang, rhyming slang. Yeah, right, but, right. But also They're on the queens. street, or, or like, you know, Polari. So uh, in Britain, there was a dialect that was kind of the queer and sailor and oh, uh, right, con right. man thief uh, argot called Polari. So it's sort of like, uh, uh, do you know Nick Leonard, the comedian from San Francisco? Not offhand, but probably. Uh, he's, a, he's a San Francisco comedian who's like a real student of the history of comedy. And he turned me on to these skits by Julian and Sandy, who were on Kenneth Horn's Around the Horn radio show 
in uh, England in the 60s. And it was like the least closeted gay characters on, on public radio, but they weren't officially gay, but they spoke in Polari and they used that to, um, uh, you know, to, to closet themselves, basically. And talk to um, their friends. And yeah. uh, do you know that Paul yeah. Lind, that in the early 70s, someone, I th- believe it was, no, no, it was not Paul Lind. It was... Oh, he was also on the Hollywood Square. Charles Nelson Riley. Charles Nelson Riley. That's it exactly. Someone tried to blackmail Charles Nelson Riley in the early seventies, <laughs> uh, and he, he said they were going to tell people that he was gay, and he was like, "Please, <laughs> please try to shock anyone with that. You may tell whoever." That's you so wish. funny. Yeah. You know, I was so clueless as a kid, though. I used to watch that show. I was Paul Lind was whoosh. You know, I was like. Yeah. What an exceedingly witty fellow he is. Yeah, well, that's because uh, you were blessedly not sexual as a tiny yes, child. Yes, that's true. That's it's true. one of the great things about my childhood is how not sexual it was. Right, right. I would like to thank my father, my mother, my stepmother, <laughs> all of the adults All in the my neighbors, life. the whole neighborhood. My four right. older brothers and my older sisters. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. I'd like to, I'd like to thank that everyone for this award. That is a super point. That people yes. don't uh, talk about. No mm-hmm. John Bonet Ramsey's in our neighborhood. Uh, wow, nice reference. Also from the three sixty eight ninety four. So um, yeah, I am yeah. old. It's a fact. It's just a fact that it's, I'm old. But the thing is, is so so Sultanes. How do we know that he invented palindromes? Okay, Marshall. Do you know the epigrammist Marshall, who no. uh, Roman, you know, maybe first century CE, I mm-hmm. believe. Um, he wrote a bunch of short, very witty. Uh, uh, it's like good stand-up comedy. A lot of it. There's usually okay. a zinger at the end. It leads you one way. Then there's the twist. You know. Nice. Uh, and he wrote two of them about Sotades, apparently because Sotades was quite popular in those days before the monks became the keepers of libraries and destroyed all his books. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and so he wrote one. They basically wrote two, basically complaining about the fact that Sotades was more popular than he was and kind of bitching about it. And so like one of them was like, uh, just because I don't write backwards poems or read Sotades, the obscene Canadoi, uh, doesn't mean I'm not a good poet. Would you make the famous (laughs) racehorse walk on a plank? Come on. I write good stuff, not popular crowd pleasing bullshit like that. Wow. So he was an alt comic uh, back in yeah. the day. He's like, I'm not writing uh, ox fart jokes. So yeah, sorry. exactly. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah, if, you, if you're looking for flute fart jokes, go find Sultanas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. And his other one was even sharper. It was, uh, 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 so in those days, I guess, cunnilingus was considered really dangerous as well as, uh, strangely enough, gay for men to perform cunnilingus meant on, they were homosexual to, to women or <laughs> yeah yeah to women oh it, it's, interesting it's, it's a it, very different frame of thinking than we have today <laughs> thousands of years <laughs> thousands of years of men going how can i get out of this yes, kick off is exactly. at noon kick off is at noon get me out exactly. of here exactly so, so uh, uh, not surprised okay so this one he was like so it was a pun based on the phrase putting your head in danger which uh you know he got his head oh, okay removed right so it was like his so Toddy's putting his head in danger. No, basically, because he can no longer carry a stout truncheon, he uses his tongue. Ah. Uh. So putting his head in danger, initially you think he's risking getting executed by the king, but really but what it means is he's going to catch an STD from oral sex. Right. And then the invention and, of the yeah. dental dam. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> not, not addressed in Marshall. <laughs> Oddly enough, wow. or at okay. least I haven't finished. I haven't finished his book. I just skipped to the parts about Sotades. But anyway, so he did these two palind- these two epigrams on Sotades, and uh, the the one where he says, "Just because I don't write backwards like Sotades, the obscene." Is the Canadas. first sort of reference to it. Yeah, it's, why yeah, people think yeah. that he's the one. Fair enough. Well, it's interesting. You know, people found a couple hidden references. It was it was very. Um, uh, dangerous, obviously, to be too much like Sotades, uh, 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 an author who pretended to be Plutarch, but wasn't, they call him pseudo Plutarch, wrote a, a lesson for kids that was just like, don't be an idiot like Sotades the obscene and insult the king to his face. What are you, stupid? That's Which, it. you know, 
that's common sense. That sounds um, like a beautiful children's book and a good parable. <laughs> They're not wrong. Exactly. Right. Uh, so there was a lot of kind of things like that at the time. Um, but uh, yeah, but the actual word. So the only fragments of Sotades we have are the quotes people made in telling you not to be like Sotades. Right, right. Yeah. His actual enough. stuff has all been destroyed. So yeah. So be it. Oh, what I was going to say is because he was so forbidden, uh, scholars just in the last 20 years since I've started researching this have found a couple other authors referring to Sotades, but they didn't even use his name. So people missed it the first time. Wow, he got subtweeted before Twitter. Yeah, exactly. He, he invented subtweeting as the subject. Mm -hmm. Like one of them. So I told you that there was that part about, um, you know, just like Zeus married his sister Hera with the first line of his infamous poem. So another poet, I think it was Callimachus, um, uh, starts out a poem where he says the exact same words and then he interrupts himself and goes, no, no, you stupid dog. You'll get yourself killed. Don't say that. That's funny. And and uh, an Italian guy only figured that out in the 1990s mm. that they was talking about Sotadis. Well, that's fascinating. That is cool. So when's the next instance of palindromes? When's it become okay? Uh, well, it's back and forth all through history. That's kind of an interesting thing. You know, in the Greek world, palindromes were going on. In China, palindromes were going on. Uh, so it falls in and out of fashion in every culture really goes through uh, periods where people go, this is stupid. It's just artificial. This is bad poetry. This sucks. And then other people think it's really cool. And there's cycles of this in every society and they're offset. So, you know, uh, Greece, you have uh, holy Christian palindromes, uh, okay. like going around baptismal fonts, nipsana nama matame mononopsin, wash your sins, not only your face, is found even today in churches all across Europe and in Greece uh, on holy baptismal fonts. Oh, okay. So if if the the so the first palindrome, the the oldest palindrome that that we've been able to find is Sultanus. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, no. The oldest one we have surviving in, in in the sense that we use it, letter for letter, backwards and forwards, uh, is from the first century BCE, and it's a school textbook from Teb Tunis, Egypt. So again, just like I learned about palindromes, kids were learning about palindromes uh, in school back then. So, and so there's nothing before that in any other culture. Like there's no, like- I haven't found Chinese. it. I, I, okay. I don't want to claim, you know, I, 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 I've been researching this as hard as anyone, but there's a lot of info in the world. <laughs> right, there is very much. And, but so according to the info that you have, the, yeah, the oldest- Yeah, as far find, as anybody knows, yeah started in egypt and then yeah. uh and has come forward and it was greek language oh, found okay. in egypt there were two there were a bunch found in pompeii okay uh including the greek one from teb tunis was in pompeii and the famous sator square or rotas square is really what we should call it okay. are you familiar with that nope that was one Did of the you reasons see the movie? I... yep <laughs> go ahead Oh, I was just going to say the reason I didn't study classics in college, oh, besides my right. Latin teacher telling me that I wasn't good at Latin, was that I was going to have to study ancient Greek. Um, so uh, yeah. instead, well, uh, this, yeah. so well, the Rota Square is in Latin, and uh, the movie Tenet, which nobody understood, is completely based on the Rota Square. And what is which the might Rota be Square? why no one understand it. So. Uh, it's a visual thing. I should draw it on the on the board back there. It's a five by five square of words that reads up, down, sideways, backwards, all the same. And okay. so you can do it in either direction. You can do rotas, opera, tenet, arepo, sator, or you can start with sator and do sator, arepo, tenet, opera, rotas. Okay. And so write those five words on top of each other like a word stack. And yeah. the S, it spells Sator down as well as across. And at the end, it goes up and to the left as well wow. in every direction. So you can imagine that tenet is like a, a, a plus sign in the middle of it. Okay. Right? Yeah. And what was the <clears throat> And movie? that's the whole movie tenet was based on that. Okay. It was based on that way. square. Yeah. Because what so was. So for example. Yeah. So go ahead. I just, I've so, never uh, heard of the movie tenet. 
Oh, really? It was like the first Hollywood blockbuster they tried to rush out in the middle of the pandemic and nobody went because it was in the <laughs> middle of the pandemic. They kind yeah, of missed the timing on it. That's going to hurt. It was that guy, Christopher Nolan. Oh, okay. Who's the, the memento? And yeah. uh, he's done a, uh, a bunch of that yeah, guy. That weirdo. That, that, this that was a like... huge, big budget movie. Okay. Well, good for him. It was, he's the yeah. M.I. Shyamalan of, of words. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Good for, him. good for him. Yeah, Memento, of course, also a palindromic movie because the whole thing goes backwards. Yep. He's obviously a, a filmmaker hero of mine. But right, right. Uh, this yeah. one was a massive flop because nobody wanted to go to theaters. But it could it could be huge in uh in the long, you know, if if he's Maybe. if he's willing to play the long game. If the if it'll the keep network coming is... back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So yeah. So in that film, for any listeners who may have seen the movie, so famously everybody goes, I didn't understand what that was about. So it's not a time travel movie, it's a time reversal movie. So someone has invented a machine that you go into the machine and when you come out time runs backwards for you to compare to everybody else. Like Benjamin Buttons? Benjamin. Well, like your, your, your direction of time is reversed. So it's today and then I wake up and then it's yesterday and then I wake up, it's the day before. Right, right. Um, and, and so these guys are using it to commit crimes, of course. Like you can go into the future, find out what the stock prices are, go backwards, tell somebody what they're going to be. right. Uh, and and so that's the kind of that's kind of the idea. And it's the always about the, money. It's always yeah. so sad. Nobody's ever using time travel to fix things. Well, quantum leap. But well, uh, one guy's trying to destroy the world. That's okay. not really arguably fixing things from his point of view. <laughs> right. It's certainly finite. It's certainly his, uh, his perception is questionable. Truth. Truth that. Yeah. Yeah. But so Rotos is the name of the machine. Tenet is a password they give you in the first scene, which is at an opera. Okay. Sator is the last name of the villain, uh, Andre Sator. And this is my favorite twist. So in this word square, we know what four of those five words are as Latin words. They're very common Latin words. A repo, nobody has any idea what it is. It's just not a word. Okay. It just simply is not a Latin word. People have made lists of all the Latin words. It's not one of the lists. Right. Some people go, oh, it must be a name we don't know. Well, people have made lists of all the Latin names, too, and it's right. not one of those, right? I think it's just the letters you needed to make the square work after you put the other words into it. Oh, very possible, because you're just right. like, because there's that guy. Yeah, it's this really is... easy to do four of the five words. Right. And then... You only have two letters that are not filled in yet, and you can just put anything that sounds reasonable. So the twist in the movie is the character Thomas Arepo is an art forger who you never see in the movie, and we're not sure if he really exists, okay. which I think is a very subtle shout out to the fact that this isn't a real word. Right. Wow, this is a deep dive into some palindrome doors. I know. This is a Can you believe yeah. no one else figured out how this movie worked besides me? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Can you believe that there aren't, it's just the 600 people that are deep diving into palindromes? They want to know. They want to know. So the real can you believe is can you believe some studio spent a hundred million dollars to make this movie on the premise that this would be a big hit? Big hit, big hit. Well, we got Nolan attached to it, you guys. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was, obviously. Yeah. That's yeah. so funny. And some good actors. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what else? What, what else do you want to tell me? Like, so we go forward, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me just say this. So I got into this, you know, just because I thought palindromes are fun. And then I started writing them. I met some people who wrote them. And John Agee sent in some cartoons. I'm doing this little zine, the little handmade. So you had somebody on zines on the Dork Forest recently. They sounded pretty professional. Like they actually went to a printer and stuff. Yeah. Like the kind of the zine world I knew is you get eight sheets of regular printer paper. You fold them in half. You staple them in the middle. And you've got a 32 page booklet. And that's your zine. Well, but do, are you handwriting it out? Some people do, but usually you print it on a printer. Well, Mine are all printed. 
I put right. them on well, my. You're printer. as fancy as those two guys that were on mine. No, no, no. They went to a professional printer and had a thousand copies made up and had color glossy covers and that eventually, kind of thing. eventually. But they yeah, were. Yeah. But, but the zines that they loved more than their own zines. Yeah. Were the ones that were eight pieces of paper that were printed right, on a right. dot matrix printer. Exactly. Printers. Exactly. Yes. Or some people had written, but that wasn't really sustainable over the long run. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, so, but I, I kind of morphed into a history geek is what I, I did. And it's gotten out of hand to the point where I'm actually giving talks at scholarly conferences now. About? I'm, I'm just about, just about uh, palindromes the Rotas or? Square, about palindromes, okay. Rotas Square. I'm finding new palindromes that people don't know about. I'm giving a talk at the International Medieval Congress in Leeds in July, except it's on Zoom this year, uh, on the tradition of Latin palindromes. Where I just, for the first time ever, collect all of the Latin palindromes. I've found 47 so far and give the history of them and the citations of where you can find them and link them together. And then I argue that they form a coherent self referential tradition uh, based on each other. It's not just people scribbling little notes in the margins, though there is some of that too. Okay. So that's, are, that's the are, kind of stuff I'm doing. Were they famous? Um... These, these Latin palindromes you found 47 yeah. of, some of them are from published works and some of them are just from diaries and stuff or? Well, I mean, you know, all, all of the ones oh. I'm looking at were before 1600. So very few of them were even after the book was invented. So most of these okay. are in handwritten manuscripts, but some of them were still very famous. Like there's a guy, Hrabanus Morris uh, in 805, like right when Charlemagne was the king. And mm -hmm. they're pulling together the big library. Um, did you watch uh, uh, Game of Thrones? No. Oh, okay. So there's a maester scene. So there's a cool scene toward the end where the one guy gets trained as a maester and he goes to this giant library with yeah. the esoteric knowledge and books and stuff. That's basically Charlemagne's library is what that's based on. Al Quinn formed this library for Charlemagne. Did you ever read any Umberto Eco? I'm dying to read Name of the Rose. That's all about well, this stuff right right name of the rose is the only one i've tried to read other ones Alberto echo is an incredible historical fiction writer incredibly yeah. dense incredibly smart very well researched recently died and uh we have in this house probably four or five of his books i have no. only read the name of the rose he and wrote one that actually has like the sator square in the title or some variation on it which obviously yeah. is on my reading list. Who was the uh, uh, Dan Brown? He's the fanciest yeah, Dan right. Brown in the world. Um, right. Echo. Yes. But a more real Dan Brown, a less cheesy Dan Brown. He's 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 done he's done essentially a lot more of the of the background work. So, but the yeah. Dave of the Rose is a beautiful book. It's a and it's I gotta exciting. Read that. It's it's really yeah. smart, and it's it's got it's actually pretty funny, and yeah. it's um. You know, it's very hard in, in some of that dense fiction to yeah, be yeah. funny. And yeah. so good for them. Good for good, I should good I for should America. read that. That should be I'm, I have aspirations to write stuff like that, too. So, right, so it right. sounds like even though I haven't read Echo, it sounds like what you're saying is Umberto Echo to Dan Brown is like Ursula Le Guin to J.K. Rowling. Oh, easily. Yeah. 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 Ursula the ratio Le Guin. is the same. Right. And I. Uh, yeah and the thing is is right i mean it's sort of the the jk rowling is even i mean dude the the world building is so different you know you might yeah. as well say that like ann mccaffrey is to you know uh nk jemison you know i mean it's oh. just like it's very the world building is real right it's a lot more up here it's a lot yeah. lighter and it doesn't mean that both are not enjoyable right right uh, right i but but it is sometimes harder for me to read an umberto echo than it is to read a dan yeah. brown you know a dan brown i can that you know that's three or four days and i'm like well that was fun right right it's over sure sure umberto well, echo, definitely six yeah. weeks <laughs> i'm definitely team Le Guin on the uh on oh, that yeah. comparison oh for um, sure for sure but you know and i bring well i bring it up because they both wrote series about schools of wizards oh and well ursula was a little salty about that uh, oh, I'm sure. And then, but Neil Gaiman, I'm sure also has some, so the, the, the magic series that he wrote, uh, literally it was a graphic novel and the artist, it was 10 years before JK Rowling wrote Harry Potter. 
Right. If you look at the magic series that Neil Gaiman wrote, yeah, the, the boy looks like yeah. Harry Potter. Oh wow! Well, and what he year? Some magic school. Um, or what's the name of it? I don't care about the year. What's the, the name? The Met. Uh, it's got the word. Just Neil Gaiman magic, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Well, I'll just Google Neil Gaiman magic. Cool. There you go. Yeah, he's also on my list, but I haven't got to him yet. Oh, he's a delight, as you can imagine. Yeah. Uh, if and if and if you and if you like the art, right? Yeah. If you like the art of the uh, of the palindrome, the graphic novel. Yeah. Yeah. His, um, I would say, Sandman is extraordinary. The, oh yeah, I've heard raves. Right. Unfortunately, there's you know, like I I think I read Sandman, and I think it was more than eighty. It was might have been seventy five or eighty. Uh, yeah. issues and they're they only wow. take 20 minutes but the art is gorgeous and it's beautiful yeah. but it's um anyway so let us i'm sure you can get them all in one book at the library now uh i no, you can't you can get them in oh. four books uh that are okay. beautifully bound and they're a hundred dollars nice. each and i got them for oh my Ashcraft for christmas four years ago. oh nice so. we have a whole graphic novel section at the library work at, oh, there so you I'm, go. I'm sure they have it oh i'm sure they've got it so there's probably yeah yeah and awesome and there's, yeah do that I can read it on the job. You could, yeah, yeah, all right, right. Yeah. As people walk behind you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not just yet. And okay. Uh, so, okay. So, and then, and then you've also done a bunch of sort of competitions, like you've created shows. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's, that other uh, I've done a, a comedy show. Yeah, uh, um, Mike Kaplan was in that, and Zach Sherwin, and Dax Jordan, some other oh, people yeah. you know. Th Virginia nerds, Jones, man. who you oh, just yeah. worked with, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and what's amazing, so we did, so basically, uh, the show palindrome fight is just the same thing as the world palindrome championship, except for a comedy show. And we take improv suggestions from the audience. The amazing thing is no one has ever failed to come up with a palindrome, even people who've not written palindromes before. That's amazing. I'm not going to say they're good. No, nope. well, and what they makes can a, be sometimes what, they are. What makes a good palindrome versus a not? Oh, there we go. So that's an interesting question. So we get back to your earlier thing about the Illuminatus Illuminati. Mm -hmm. I would argue that almost every palindrome has a flaw in it mm -hmm. because it's just so hard to write things that read the same backwards and forwards. So uh, it's your taste in flaws. What do you choose? What kind uh -huh. of flaws do you choose? And there are different palindromists in the world who find different things acceptable. Like uh, Martin Clear, the current reigning world palindrome championship would never say like, Oh, darn it. You know, O H comma D A R N I T. He's like, no, O should only be a single O and it's only a poetic call to a, a named figure. And I'm like, Oh, screw it. Oh, whatever. <laughs> I'll do O with or without an H. You okay. know, people know if, what if you're you saying. Need, if you need the H you got to need. Yeah. H. Right. Right. Exactly. If I need, but uh, there's other things I won't, I will, I don't do initials. I don't do abbreviations. Okay. You know, I find that unacceptable. Other people do. So. And, and plurality, obviously. Yeah. And... Or, or grammar mistake. Some people, you know, bad palindromists might have a glossary at the end of their palindrome to explain why something should make sense. Uh, Lori K. Martin <laughs> is doing a joke where uh, she says the plural of Pegasus as Pegasuses, which. Oh, uh, has um initially made everyone i know cringe and and then <laughs> and then literally i believe she's had to address it in the joke right she's just like it's more Not fun Pegasi. to say Pegasus. yeah yeah it's just more fun to say <laughs> get off my areola and, right, uh, right right so uh, which is a janelle monet line out of a, out of well, a song oh, is there whoosh. music yeah is there is are people doing palindrome in music? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I've been doing it for centuries. There's canons, the whole, uh, you know, uh, uh, classical canons. Yeah. There were the retrograde canons, the backwards canons. Even Bach, people like that did uh, uh, things. Going back to like the 14th century, there's a whole long tradition. The weird thing is you can't really hear that it's any different. You can read the sheet music. So it's more like the sheet music is palindromic, but you would never know it listening to it. Okay, we're. I just did a podcast uh, for uh, Anthony Etheridge, one of my competitors, a uh, palindromist buddy, um, uh, Penderact Press. He's a poet. He's a constrained poet, and uh, he and I were on with uh, Lori White, who's a bassooner for the Salt Lake City Orchestra. Okay. Some people like to say bassoonist, but 
like Laurie Kilmartin, I think bassooner is, is a funner choice. word. Yeah, yeah. It's much more fun. So, uh, I wonder how if but she, she plays and writes backwards. Okay. Does she? <laughs> she does use bassoonist. She, okay. I mean, she gets paid. It's a job. She gets paid real money. Right, so right. she's so not she... going to goof around with it. Right, right. And uh, I do know that. And she's actually anyone... worked really hard and stuff. So. Right. And she gets to call it whatever. It's her job. Yes, yes, uh, absolutely. Right. Whenever anyone calls me a comedian, I like to point out that oh. I, if they're going to diminish my work, if they could please call me a comediette. <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. My yeah. wife is an actor. So yeah, I yes. know what you're saying. Yes. Right. And uh it was unless funny. your name is Anne, then comedian would still oh. be cheesy. <laughs> that would be super cheesy anyway. <laughs> uh Mark Saltbeat Vite, that's it. Salt, salt yes, Vite. Salt Vite. Yes. Thank you. At Dowist. Uh T A O Dowish. Oh, that's right. right. Not is. I don't claim to be authentic Taoism, but I have kind of my own idiosyncratic take on it. I have a blog called dowish.org. Okay. Uh, if you want to go, that's a whole nother world that, uh, you know, right, we're right. not going into today. But, the, but yeah, my Twitter handle is dowish. Right. Yeah. What's the palindrome website? It's just palindromist.org. .org. And if because you want to see the great film, The Palindromists, that's thepalindromist.com. Okay. And uh, Apple and TV and iTunes. That's awesome. Well, Are it you has been an hour. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, there yeah, you go. That's the whole thing. Is okay. that it is uh the hour has gone by so quickly. This was fascinating and lovely. Thank you. Yeah, I, it was very fun. I had a great I've, time. I've, I'm honored. I've wanted to do the show forever. So thank you very much for having me on. You're welcome. And Rangers, you know the rules out there. Take care of each other. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh my God. Thank we you. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show?